Hi, Dr. Versalotti here, and in this screencast, I'm going to review an example of an interpretive exercise. Now, as a reminder, um, an interpretive exercise is a perhaps a more complex test question where the test taker is given a situation in order to interpret and then using the information in the figure or the graph or the description has to answer the questions that follow. So that's the what we have here. So we have um, information here and then we have some questions that we have to answer by interpreting the information that we are given up in in this part of the test question. Now, Suski's text is written for teachers. So this would be um, an interpretive exercise for instructors learning about assessment. Okay, so this deals with an item analysis for an objective test. The objective test might have had 20, 30, or 40 questions, but for this test item, we're just going to we're just giving information for four of the items. Now, in order to do an item analysis, what we do, um, if we take all the exams and we sort them from the highest score to the lowest score, and the top third, and in this case, uh, that equals 10, the top third are the students who are have more content knowledge, right? These are our students who got A's. And then we skip the middle students and we go to the bottom third. And the bottom third in this example, again, is 10 students. And these are the students who had less content knowledge on this particular exam. Okay, so then using that information, we look at each item. Um, and I'm going to start at item two here because item two is a little bit easier to understand in that it is sort of what we expect. For item two, the students who had a lot of content knowledge, got A's on the exam, chose um, option A as the correct answer. Eight of them chose, most of the top students chose A, and that was correct. Some students chose C, uh, and some of the students in the bottom third on this test chose B. This is, this is kind of what we expect in that item A was the right answer, and students who did well on the test, on the exam, got it right. That's what we expect. And C seemed to be a good distractor. It, it seems to represent some information that if students had a slight misunderstanding, um, C kind of attracted them. So then the teacher can find out um, and correct that information. And B was a good distractor for some students with lower content knowledge. Okay, now let's look up at item one. So item one is a little bit unusual in that of the top 10 students on this exam, all of them chose item C, option C for this question, but item C is not the correct answer. The correct answer is B. Some of the students who um, didn't do as well on this exam chose the correct answer, but they also chose A, C, and D. So there's a lot of, um, we have to question that test item, right? Where as we analyze our test questions, we have to think about um, why that might be. If we thought the answer was B, but all the kids who did really well on the exam didn't think it was the right answer, is there something wrong in that wording? Um, we're not, we, we should probably look at that test question. Okay, so now let's look at three and take a moment to review what that shows. 
and then take a look at test item four and look at what that shows. Okay, so now that we have reviewed um, the, if now that we have interpreted the results, now we're going to go ahead and answer the questions at the bottom. Question number one, and again, the answers are here, so I'm just going to talk them through. Um, question number one is which item is the easiest based on this information we're given? And the answer is question item four. Why? Because um, all of the students who scored well on the test got it right, which we would expect. But notice that most students who demonstrated less content knowledge also overwhelmingly got it right. So this one is the most correct because both the top and the bottom third mostly got it right. Question two asks us as the instructor to consider which item shows negative, very bad discrimination. So item discrimination is the measure between um, how, w how well a test item identifies who did well on the exam overall versus who didn't do as well on the exam, right? It's a measure of which individual test items discriminates from students who have the content knowledge versus students who don't have the content knowledge. We want test questions to do that, but if it's negative, that means the students who did well didn't do well on that particular item, and the students who showed less overall content knowledge maybe did do well. And as you see, the answer is three. Um, you can see here that for some reason, um, students in the top third, they really liked A and they really liked D, and only one picked, managed to pick the correct item. And the reverse is true for the students um, in the bottom third. So in this particular test, they demonstrated less content knowledge, but somehow outperformed the students who had higher scores on the overall exam. And um, Brown and Abwick-Rama goes through the math of how to figure out the item discrimination. But we can also see that just as we look at the results. Um, question three says, which test item discriminates best between the high and the low scores? And tells us that that answer is item two, because you see most of the students in the top on the this particular exam got it right, but for the students at the bottom, they chose B or C. Um, and that, again, those distractors probably um, help the instructor identify what the misunderstanding is for those learners on that test item. The remaining items, it asks, right, the, um, for item two, which distractor is most effective? So if we look at number two, uh, the correct answer is A. So between B, C, and D, which option was most attractive for students who chose the wrong answer? Obviously, it's B. And then for item three, which distractor must be changed? So we have um, the correct answer is C, and we talked already that C should be changed because this is terrible item discrimination. But this question here asks us which distractor must be changed. And the distractor B, no one chose. So if nobody's choosing it, it shouldn't be on your exam. If if a option on your objective test isn't attractive, then it's not serving any diagnostic um, function. It doesn't help you know how to teach the students who have shallow knowledge. So that's the, the reasoning there. Um, feel free to post um, questions uh, to the discussion board if you want to talk further.